70% of friendships start with small talk, so imagine how much you miss when you sit there in silence. But as an introvert, I get it. So for the last seven days, it became my life mission to research the best scientific way to master small talk. First things first, how do you know when it's okay to engage in a small talk with someone? Well, there are three factors here. Distance. You have to be close to the person you want to talk to. That's because you don't want to be forced to scream for them to hear you. Eye contact. You have to lock eyes with someone before approaching. And positive body language. The human brain puts every new face in two categories, friends or foes. So to be categorized as a friend, smile. You check these off the list and now you are ready to actually begin the small talk. But let's admit it, we all hate to start a conversation with strangers, especially because we think that they don't want anything to do with us. But is it true? Well, there's this thing called the social validation theory. Most of the time we want to connect with others, but we think that everybody else doesn't. And since we want their social approval, we don't say anything. So there's a gap between what we want and what we do. But when you break the ice first, people tend to like you more. Now it's time to find out how to actually start the conversation. Let's say it's a hot summer afternoon and you get into a taxi. The classic way is to ask the driver a question. Think about all the questions that you can ask a complete stranger. How are you? What's your name? Or where did you get that? These are all bad icebreakers. Why? Because all of them put pressure and give him the need to either explain, summarize, or justify something. So what's the better alternative? Observational statements. There are three steps that you have to take in order to create one. So let's take the same scenario. Step one, identify the common ground. What is something that both of you are aware of? The heat. Step two, bring up the common ground. Say something like, pretty hot out there, isn't it? It's a casual and natural remark. You didn't try too hard by asking him a random, how are you? Or what's your name? So the worst thing he can say is nothing. But in most cases, he will say something like, yeah, it is followed by a smile. This is the cue you need to move on to. Step three, discuss the common ground. Here you add something to the conversation related to the subject. Something like, it's crazy how much temperatures have gotten up lately. Once you are already in the middle of the small talk, the worst thing you can do is to let it fade away. Trust me, the awkward silence will be bad. But how can you prevent this from happening? By avoiding closed-ended questions and using open-ended ones. A closed-ended question is something like, Is traffic usually this bad around here? This is a bad question because it can be answered with just one word. On the other hand, open-ended questions sound like this. Why is there so much traffic around here? This question is better. It's more specific requires more details, and it can't be answered in just one word. Usually closed-ended questions start with how, and they are used the most in society, while open-ended questions start with other words like why, who, etc. Now, this technique will only get you so far in any conversation you have. Why? Because of the self-expansion theory. In 1997, Arthur Aaron, a famous psychologist, made one of the greatest social experiments of all time. He gathered 96 complete strangers. Then he matched them into pairs of two. Half of them were left alone for 45 minutes to make small talk on their own. Nothing significant happened, but for the other half, he prepared a set of 36 questions to ask each other. The result? Most of them turned from complete strangers to good friends. One pair even got married. If you want to check out the questions, I'm going to leave them in the comments below. Most of them are pretty random, yet you can use them to spike up any conversation. Overall, this experiment helped Aaron discover that people want to share their random opinions and thoughts with others. Cat owners are liberals. Cat owners believe in hate speech. Cat owners are Democrats. Cat owners are but here comes a problem that you may have thought about. What if the other person asks you a question that you don't want to answer? Two words, reverse pivot. You have to deflect the question back at the other person. Let's say it's around election time and he asks you something like this. So who are you voting for? Then you can answer with something like, well, who do you think I'm voting for? From now, you can pick up subtle cues about his thoughts on politics, but most of the time, it's better to just say what you really think. Now here comes the most crucial part of the small talk. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that 70% of friendships start with small talk. But what else do they have in common? At some point, they all turn the small talk into something deeper. How can you do that? By following Benjamin Franklin's example. You see, Ben Franklin wasn't always a master when it came to turning small talk into deep conversations. 
but everything changed when he founded the Junto Club in 1727. There he learned that every conversation is made of two parts, the surface and the underlying material. Most of the time, the surfaces all we share. That's because we're hesitant to open up about our personal lives. So he started to use some questions that help expose what others really wanted to talk about. These are called follow-up questions. So if your taxi driver says something like, I used to play basketball a lot and dreamed of going pro. Usually you will answer with something like, that's cool to hear, man. But he doesn't want you to do that. He probably wants to talk about the frustration of his failed dreams. This is the underlying material. So ask him a follow-up question, like, what came in the way? So he will start opening up more about his past. But after you reach this deeper point of your conversation, you shouldn't go back to small talk. You have to keep the other person open. But how? By using the flattery insight. This technique is made out of two points. The compliment, something simple that you genuinely think about the other person, like, you seem very hardworking. And the cold read, this is the part where you make an assumption about them. I guess you worked in more than one domain during the years. Here's the thing, it doesn't matter if you are right or wrong about your assumption, because either way, you basically invited him to keep the flow of the conversation going until you arrive at your destination. Here, the best thing you can do is to shake his hand. Why? Well, handshakes were proven to increase serotonin levels. This hormone helps humans build a connection with each other. Yet, the biggest obstacle you can face every time you talk to a stranger is that they could see you as a creep. How can you avoid this? Well, I have an entire video just for that.